What's up guys, WWE Stage Creator back again with another video. Today, I'll be giving you my review of WrestleMania 36 Part 2. So today was Part 2, Night 2 of WrestleMania 36. The WrestleMania too big for one night. And this card was a lot better than the card yesterday. Let's see how good it was. What were the good parts, what were the bad parts. We'll get into all of that in this video. So starting off, we had the NXT Women's Championship match and Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship, the Royal Rumble winner. Charlotte Flair beat Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. And this isn't really a surprise. I predicted Rhea Ripley, but you know, Charlotte Flair is the WWE's golden girl. You know, she's given everything. She's given all the WrestleMania spotlights. They're pushing her to the moon. I mean, she will go down in history as one of the greatest WWE women's wrestlers of all time. There's no doubt about it. So, yeah, it makes sense for her to look strong here at WrestleMania and win the NXT Women's Championship. And I'm not too bothered by it. You know, Rhea Ripley did look good. Like, they worked on her knee. She had an injury. It was really good storytelling throughout the match. They were a lot louder so that you didn't even notice the crowd wasn't there because they were loud. They were selling really well and Rhea Ripley had some awesome gear on. I hope she gets a figure of that gear. That was really, really nice. But yeah, the match was really good. Really enjoyed it. Rhea Ripley lost. I don't think it really hurts her. She'll probably win it back. And Charlotte Flair winning the NXT Women's Championship is a good thing for NXT. And I look forward to seeing what she does with that championship reign. Next up, we had a random singles match between Alistair Black and Bobby Lashley. This was announced and they could have done something with it to have it like be a little bit of more of a story to it. You know, you could have had Lashley like knock on the door of Alistair Black, say, I want to challenge you, whatever. Do something like that. But no, it was just randomly announced and Alistair Black beat Bobby Lashley. Uh, they kind of kept Lashley strong by having him just get caught by a mistake because of Lana. Lana, he had him up for the Dominator and then Lana's like, no, spear him. He drops Black and then goes for the spear, gets Black masked and he lost. So it looks like they're going to split up Lashley and Lana, which I think is a good thing. But yeah, Lashley loses to Black at WrestleMania. Good win for Alistair Black. Then we had a match with a really great story. We had Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. And Otis works way better with a crowd. So this match was air. But Otis beats Dolph Ziggler with the help of Mandy Rose low-blowing Dolph Ziggler. And then these two embrace at the end. They're finally together. Otis, my boy, gets the girl. And they actually kissed, which was really, really cool, really funny. And Otis and Mandy are now an item. We'll have to wait and see what transpires with that relationship and all that. It'll be really interesting to see what they do with Otis and Mandy from here on. Then we had the long-awaited return of Edge to WrestleMania, the last man standing match. Randy Orton versus Edge, team rated RKO exploding here at WrestleMania. And these two had a pretty damn good last man standing match, you know. I didn't expect too much craziness from them because, you know, it's Edge and Randy Orton. They're very, like, slow, methodical workers. They're not going to do anything too crazy. And they fought very slow throughout the entire PC, just selling a lot and just, like, staying down for, like, nine counts. And it was pretty good. I mean, some people may be bored by it, but I thought it was decent. They did some unique stuff in the backstage, Edge using, like, the gym equipment and there was like a cage on the ceiling and he climbed up and hit an elbow on a table and he like climbed up this ladder and then jumped through a table on Randy Orton and then they make their way up to this production truck and then Edge hits a spear and then a concerto and Randy Orton stays down for the count and yeah Edge wins as I predicted pretty good match go check it out if you like that feud then we have the Fatal 5-Way Women's Championship match for SmackDown, and it was pretty good. I mean, I thought Sasha Banks was going to win, but they did tease that. Bayley ended up retaining the Women's Championship, and there was a tease at the end, so Bayley and Sasha were teaming up on Lacey Evans, and then Bayley accidentally hit Sasha, and Sasha got a little bit pissed, and then Lacey Evans hit Sasha with the Women's Right, and Bayley didn't help save Sasha, so Sasha got eliminated, and then Sasha ends up helping Bayley to win the championship and retain, and yeah, seeds are planted for the turn of Sasha Banks, and they will have a good match in the future, I hope. 
Then we got into the match I was most excited about going into this. After seeing the Boneyard match, we knew this was going to be something special. And it definitely was. This was really cool, really unique. I don't think it was as good as the Boneyard match. I still prefer the Boneyard match. But this was very different. It was like inside the mind of John Cena and like dissecting John Cena's mind and his emotions and stuff and Bray Wyatt toying with John Cena. He played with the idea of Cena turning heel, all the hate getting to him. He revisited Cena's biggest failure with the ruthless aggression thing and Doctor of Thugonomics. Revisited WrestleMania 30 as well where Cena wouldn't hit him with a chair. And yeah, this was really, really cool. Very like, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm pretty sure it was just like kind of inside the mind of John Cena, just my messing with his mind. And it was really, really cool. The Fiend gets the win as I predicted. The Fiend really needed it. And this was so unique, so different. And I think Cena will turn heel possibly after this. I mean, if he comes back for another match, I, I could totally see him turning heel. They really played with that idea throughout this whole thing. They even had him coming out as like Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Like that was really funny. So yeah, this was really, really good. Best match of the night for sure. We even had Bray Wyatt go back to his old ways dressing as he used to and cutting that promo on the rocking chair. It was really, really awesome. A lot of tiebacks, a lot of callbacks, a lot of just in the mind of John Cena, just messing with him. It was really, really awesome. And it's, this match is really, really cool because Cena, my favorite of all time. Bray Wyatt, my current favorite wrestler for a couple of years now, ever since 2014. He's been my favorite wrestler on the current roster. So this was really, really cool for me. And yeah, these guys killed it. And then the next match, the main event was Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar, and I think we all expected Drew McIntyre to pick up the win here, and he did, and this would have been so much more special if it had been in front of a crowd. The match was air, eh, it was decent, but yeah, if it was in front of a crowd, this would have been so, so, so much better. But Drew McIntyre wins, and hopefully, you know, he has a good championship run after this. Hopefully the fans don't turn on him, because it's happened with so many other people. But that's really up to WWE and the creative to actually book him in good feuds. You know, Seth Rollins last year, he won the title. Fans turn on him, but I think that was just because he was booked in terrible feuds with Baron Corbin for like three months. That, that was just terrible. So no wonder everyone turned on Seth Rollins. But I hope that doesn't happen with Drew McIntyre. I could totally see him versus Jinder Mahal, and that would make a lot of sense. Uh, hopefully that's good. I mean, I would only do that for like one, maybe two pay-per-views, but definitely mix them up with Seth Rollins, mix them up with Jinder Mahal, mix them up with a bunch of guys on the roster. It would be really nice. Andrade, Alistair Black. He's got a ton of options, and yeah, we'll see where we go from here. Comment down below what you thought of the show. It'll be really interesting to see how WWE proceeds now, because where they're going to film the shows, because Orlando is like shut down, so it's going to be really interesting. This could be the last show for a while seems like they're still going through with smackdown but i don't know where they're gonna film what they're gonna do but it'll be interesting so i hope you guys enjoyed this show i hope you guys enjoyed the review comment down below what was your favorite match favorite moment from this wrestlemania overall this wrestlemania was really good I thought they did really, really well with what they had. For the weeks leading up to WrestleMania, I said this could be one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time until all this craziness happened. And they still delivered with a really, really damn good show. And the Boneyard match, an instant classic. The Funhouse match was really, really awesome. None of that could have happened in a stadium. So at least we got something spectacular out of that. The Boneyard match, man, I will never forget that. I was... That was freaking amazing. I really loved that match. And yeah, the Funhouse match was a lot of fun too. And yeah, very good WrestleMania. A lot of good stuff. Some mess stuff that you will forget. But a lot of good memories. And I think this, some of the stuff on this show you definitely will remember for years to come. Thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please like this video, comment down below. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Road to 100k. And I will see you guys in the next video.